Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Norwegian Championship. We have an exciting matchup going on between a world champion, Espen Ullen Jorstad, who won the 2022 WSOP main event for a cool 10 million, facing up against the formidable Seaman Gold Branson. We are down to the semifinals of the Heads Up Affair. It attracted 74 entries, each popping in 800 euro buy-in to generate a 51,948 prize pool. The final four have each locked up 7,015 euros. If they make it to Heads Up, they have locked up 10,910 euros with a 16,628 euro top prize. And uh, the action was already taking place before we were able to uh, to hop in. They started with blinds at 100-100, so we are already a few blind levels in. The reason we're popping in late is that the feature table was featuring the six max PLO championship, and that was an exciting affair as well. But let's pop into the action right here. Gold Branson raising it up to 550 and taking it down with the ace-10. Espen almost didn't make it this far. We watched and commentated Espen's first matchup against Jonathan Wedd, and uh, Wedd pulled out a bluff from the century with 8-3, betting on all three streets to win a massive pot, and then had Jorstad on the ropes. Jorstad, though, sucked out and then doubled up twice uh, with coin flips to win the match, and then advanced all the way to the semifinals. And now, not only has a chance to advance to the finals, but to win the finals as well and add a heads up Norwegian championship to his resume, which already includes the 2022 WSOP main event bracelet. So we have a limp pot here. You're stead ahead with the Queen Nine. Paul Branson getting nowhere with the Jack Six. Neither player really connecting with the Ace Spade, Five Club, Seven Heart Flop. Both players check to see the Four of Spades turn. Seaman Cole Branson now has an open ended straight draw. Opposite check again, but likely will call a bet if Espen goes ahead and bets. But he does check it back, and the Nine of Spades completes the board on the river. Your set pairs up. He has to feel his nine is good, but I don't know if he will try for value or not. We shall see. He is looking down at his chips and did bet 500, and uh, I don't think Old Branson can call here. Like Old Branson is thinking it over. Wow, a check raised by Cole Branson. You can see Espen is surprised by that as well. There are three spades on the board. So Cole Branson repping a flush, repping potentially a 6-8 for the straight. And gets Espen to lay down the best hand. Cole Branson getting a world champion to fold the best hand early on. And we can see he already has 20,000 in chips. So that means he's had a great start against Espen. How the format works is that... Here we have an all-in situation from the side of the table. It is S. Knecht who can decide the tournament. He meets Dame 8. It is... A possibility here for Øyvind to be able to rock out. He sits with circa... 4,5 plus noen 25, cirka 4,8. Yes. Ingen hjelp i floppen, bortsett fra at det plukker opp et høldrag. Nå kan også en sekser holde ham i live. Der kommer dama, som betyr at det er S og bare S som kan slå ut. Øyvind på river. Og med en åtter så er dette to par for den to ganger Norgesmesteren som er tilbake her. Og det er jo klart at dette kan snu fryktelig fort, dette gutter. Så takk til Svede for å bringe oss noen av de aksjene fra den øvre tabelen. Men nå tilbake til den øvre tabelen. Og vi ser Jorstad, 3-betting, 
with his ace-10, gets Colbrett to lay down his suited jack to win the pot. Now players start off the heads-up match with uh, 10,000 in chips, and then they have another bullet for 10,000. It looks like Espen still has his bullet behind. And perhaps Seaman already used his bullet because he's sitting on about 20,000. That's a killer shot. It sounds like he wants to kill a shot, so things are being picked up a notch, but maybe that is a joke as both players are laughing. And Espen with an ace on the button. Does just complete the blinds, giving Seaman a free look at the cards with an eight deuce offsuit. Neither player really connecting with the six, jack, seven, flop, some back doors for both players. That's about it. Espen still ahead with his ace high. The ten of hearts on the turn takes care of at least Espen's back doors, but now Cole Branson does have an open ended straight draw and not an open ended but a gut shot straight draw and does bet two fifty. May be able to steal this away and does. So far, we've seen no fear from Seaman against the world champion, Espen. And the tequila shots apparently were a joke. Seaman did order an espresso. I may not understand Norwegian, but I did understand espresso. been ordering a tea. So both players ordering warm beverages. And Seaman opening the button for 550. We don't see his cards yet, but that'll change in a second. And it's very strong with the King-10 suited. Your side was dominated with the 10-5 offsuit and opts not to see a flop or otherwise contribute further to the pot. It's been a thrilling week here at the Norwegian Championship, here at Card Casino Bratislava, with much more poker action to come. The main event kicked off today with day 1A. Yesterday was the conclusion of the 800 euro buy-in Poker North Masters, which despite being open to all players and generating more than 500,000 prize pool, it was two Norwegians heads up in that as well. This could be an interesting spot with Espen opening up with a 9-7 suited. Simical Branson with a better suited 9 with the king to go along with it. Does just call. Ooh, this could be dangerous. Both players flopping top pair, but Espen has some kicker issues at the moment. Seaman checks, and let's see if Espen continues with his top pair. He was the pre-flop aggressor, and does bet one-third of the pot, 550. We know Seaman is going nowhere. Let's see if he calls or raises, if he plays his hand hard or slow. Does just call. Oh my, seven of diamonds on the turn. No more kicker problems for Espen because he improves the two pair. Well, Branson checks again. Now it's trouble for Seaman because he still has top pair, which is a super strong hand, especially in heads up, especially with that king kicker heads up. And expect your set to continue again. There are some draws that can complete. Espen's probably gonna wanna make them pay a price. Perhaps he'll check back to disguise how strong his hand already is. Well, Branson, though, is going to need a king 
as he doesn't have any of those straight draws. If he has any hopes of winning this hand, then I don't think Seaman is going anywhere facing a bet here, knowing that your stat is capable of double barreling with much less than two pair. And your set betting 1600 into 2200. So a bigger bet on the turn. Seaman thinking things over. Does make the call. And we already have 5,400 in the pot. With probably more to come on the river, depending on what it is. And a five of clubs on the river, that actually may slow down the action by Espen because a six would hit the straight. Same with an ace deuce. A 6-8 would be a nutted straight. That would be the nuts on the board. But Cole Branson, perhaps this is a blocker bet. He does bet 500. Yorstad makes the call. That pot could have gotten much bigger. But meanwhile, Yorstad wins a big pot with his 9-7 suited against C. Michael Branson. In excellent shape. Stacks are close to even. And I believe Espen has a 10K bullet behind as well. Players are now getting their tasty hot beverages. Espen to a calm, cool, and collected, but Seaman is as well. And he opens up his a7 to 550. Your set lets go of his four deuce pretty easily, not even suited. And while we're waiting for the next hand, I didn't have time to introduce myself. This is Jason Glatzer, poker reporter, poker commentator, <laughs> poker player, everything poker, coming to you live at Card Casino, Bratislava, for one of the highlights of the Norwegian Championship, the semifinals of the Heads Up Affair between Espen Wooden Orsat and Simon Gobranson. And it's been a thrilling day. We first got to commentate the end, the final table of the six max PLO. And that had a much bigger top prize of more than 50,000. And that was won by none other than Teldre Wangberg after defeating Thomas Haverstadt heads up. But back to the action, both players with hands here. Espen raising it up to 550. Let's see what Seaman opts to do with his suited King-9. That looks like a 3-bet. We could see some fireworks. It is a three bet, the 1650. We're stat deep in thought. Ops to just call to bring the pot already up to 3300. There is no big blind to ante in this heads up affair. And Espen flopping a set here on the Jack 5 2 rainbow flop. Well, Branson does have backdoor to the flush and to the straight. But you can see, other than that, he has nothing at all. But that's not going to stop him from continuing. He did three bet pre flop. A bet of 1100 into 3300, so one third of the pot. It isn't a scary board after flopping a stat for your stat. Not too many draws out there that would three bet. And if he's up against a bigger set, then that's just a cooler. He shouldn't be afraid of that either. 
The six of diamonds on the turn would have completed a draw, but instead it has Seaman drawing dead with this king nine of hearts. If it was a six of hearts, it would be a completely different story. But it looks like Seaman slowing down with a check. And let's see if Espen tries to sneak in some value against his opponent here. It looks like he is. He's looking down at his chips, grabbing a handful. It isn't a big bet, just 1375, but it might be enough for Seaman to get out of the way. We did see Seaman, though, do a check race earlier in a spot where he was able to bluff Espen off the winning hand. He's not going to be able to bluff Espen here, but he may try. Not this time. He opts to fold. Espen not able to get more value, but still wins a big pot with his set of fives. And blinds have gone up to 15300. It is a fast clock in the heads up affair. Fifteen every fifteen minutes the clock will increase. However, since they are heads up, they will be getting a lot of hands per blind level. And here's a look at their chip counts. And we do believe that Espen has a 10,000 bullet behind. Both players started with 10,000 with the ability of adding 10,000 to their stack at any time. For two bullets of 10,000, obviously you need chips to start, so one bullet gets used right away. We saw in an earlier matchup that even when Espen was low, he didn't take out uh, his second bullet. Which leads us to believe, just based off that fact alone, and that we don't see an extra bullet in front of Seaman, that it was Seaman deciding that he wanted a double stack but we missed the first few blind levels because of the PLO six max final table taking place and ending a little bit on the later side and after the start of the semifinals. So Gobranson limps and Jorstad having just the ace deuce, eight deuce opts to just check back. If it was ace deuce, he would have flopped top pair, but instead neither player with much of anything. Gobranson still ahead. Another ace pairs a board on the turn. Neither player with a club draw or a diamond draw. Not much doing here at all. But perhaps Gilbranson, after your set check twice, will take it here. But that is not the case. And seven of diamonds on the river. Let's see if either player takes a stab at it. reaching for chips. It's not a big pot, but that should get the job done. Seaman quickly folds the best hand. Had no way of knowing that was the best hand. Was an obvious fold for him. And Espen, who's been sporting oh, the Super Mario all the way long. Here on Oscar, it's er Øyvind som har 8-5 suit. Må treffe for å holde seg i live av den turneringen. King against 8-5 on the outer table. Well, there is no treff on the flop. Well, so an 8 or 5-er, and there comes it. An 8 on the turn. Hold it in life. Here is the two times Norge's best, and that does he also after that river is dealt. A 7-er changes nothing. And that means that we get a new double. He is back on a life now with his 10,000 chips. Thank you, Svede, for bringing us the action once again for the outer table. That will continue throughout our coverage. It doesn't look like we missed much. It looks like Espen was able to steal a blind with his snowman.
has been as humble as ever despite winning a world championship last year in the WSOP main event. Still the same man he always was, just plays a bit higher. But came to the Norwegian Championship to be social with his uh, fellow countrymates and have a good time and perhaps become a Norwegian champion while he's here on top of being a world champion. It's always a pleasure to see Espen and that was always the case before he was a world champion. Probably get a chance to commentate with him some cash games later in the week depending on his schedule and that will be a pleasure. I have done commentating with him in the past but not since he has become as big of a name as he is today. Espen with the jacket off on the button. just complete. Now is Cole Branson out of position going to want to put more money in with uh, with this force? He's reaching for chips, so indeed that appears to be the case. Raises it up to three big blinds. Your set is in position. And does call. And a jack out of the window on the King-10 jack flop. If not for the King, Espen would feel fairly comfortable with this. Let's see if Seaman is going to continue repping more than his fours. Indeed he does. Bets out 1,200 into a pot of 1,800. You're set with the middle pair here. On a scary uh, flop, actually. Two spades. Draws to the straight. Potentially some mate straights already with the queen nine, ace queen. Ace queen would have certainly been raising there. Probably some queen nines, too. And Jorstad makes a call and is ahead coming to the two of clubs turn. Let's see if Seaman slows down or keeps his foot on the pedal. Indeed, he's going to try again. And gets the job done. For the second time, he gets Espen to fold, despite not getting there. Likely knowing, after being called on the flop, that he either got Espen to fold some draws or that he paired up on the jack or 10. If he paired up on the king, we would have seen Espen continue along in the hand. But both of these players have advanced through a field of 74 players. So they've played quite a bit of heads up already to get to the final four. And Seaman looks like a very experienced heads up opponent, at least based on what we've seen so far. And doesn't seem to be fearing at all that he's facing up against a world champion. Jack nine on the button, opting to just complete the binds and Seaman likely to check back his suited five four. He is out of position. We did see him out of position recently just raise those fours. And neither player really hitting this flop. Will Branson with a gut shot to the wheel and some back doors. Jorstad is ahead technically, but it's hard for him to realize that if he bets in a 
his opponent calls. Okay, we'll probably see Seaman call this bet of 300. Indeed we do. Now Espen has some outs too, to a king or to an eight for the straight. Well, Branson checks again. No longer has that backdoor flush coming into a real flush draw. May feel that he's drawing only to the two, but as of right now, his five and four are still live as well. been betting twice the pot there and a quick fold by Seaman. Interesting bet sizing by the world championship by the world champion on that board or on any board betting double the pot. He knows obviously a lot more than I do. And I wouldn't be just saying that because he won a world championship last year at the WSOP. But in general I know how hard Espen works on his game. Used to be a cash game player primarily pressure at stakes that were fairly reasonable online and live before migrating mostly to tournaments put in the time the work and effort has a very good network of other good poker players that he spends time studying with grinded many many hours to get to where he is today was a well-earned title for him last summer and perhaps he can add another one today just two more matches to go for both players if they win that they claim the Norwegian championship title and the 800 euro heads up your set raising it up to 650 with the Queen 3 Cole Branson calling with this deuces and it's your set to improve to middle pair on the ace queen six flop. It's a min bet by the world champion. Seaman calling. That was just a min bet. And the eight of diamonds on the turn. Both players with the diamond. I'm not sure if that's going to change anything. Obviously. Espen's diamond is to the nut flush draw, the second nut flush draw. Let's check it back. And your set with the check mark after the seven heart river. 1900 in the pot, Seaman checks. See if your stat tries for some value here. Although the seven of hearts would have completed some straights, not so many that would have called the ace queen six flop. Does check it back. Perhaps being afraid that if he bets that Cole Branson would go ahead and raise him like he did a few hands ago with uh, lesser holdings. <laughs> Her ute på sidebordet så er det nå en all-in. Det er konge 7 mot S4. S4 kjemper for å overleve. Det er Oscar sin hånd. Og det kommer ingen treff på floppen her. Det er fortsatt konge og 7 som slår ut dette S. Uten hjelp på turn heller. Og det kommer ingenting i bånd. Det betyr at det blir i stedet en nøtt-flush. Til tross for at det er et par i bordet. I hvert fall en flush med S-høy. 
Og vi får en dobling tilbake for de av dere som lurer på hvordan vi har havnet i denne situasjonen at Øyvind plutselig er stor chipleader. Fordi nå var det tross alt Oscar som var all inn, så var det en svær hånd tidligere hvor Øyvind fikk S på RP-flopp og Oscar fikk damene. Og da er det som det ofte er i heads-up, da kommer alle pengene på og Øyvind doblet. Men nå ser vi etter denne potten her, så begynner vi å nærme oss ganske lik stilling igjen. Det er i hvert fall en Oscar som kjemper seg tilbake opp i dette lange, tøffe oppgjøret. Thank you once again, Spede, for bringing us the action of the outer table. That looks like an exciting matchup as well. But back to the action here. There was already 1,300 in the pot when Gilbranson min bet with his ace-10. He had the nut flush draw on the three-queen nine flop, and that was enough to take it down. Espen completing with his threes. Throwing an early matchup with uh, Espen against John Hen, Wede, uh, we did see both players raising quite a lot pre flop but we see Espen whipping the buttons quite more often during this match. Phil Branson making the raise. Dorstad calling an early 1800 in the pot in a coin flip situation. Dorset still ahead on the ace 410 flop, but it's going to be hard for him to go too far if he's facing a lot of aggression here because all three of those cards are higher than his pocket threes. Michael Branson was aggressive pre flop. Did bet 600 into a pot of 1800. Let's see if Dorset can snip this one out. Let's call at least to see a turn. Perhaps the ace pairing the board in the turn will make Eurostat more confident about his threes. And perhaps it'll also slow Cole Branson down, understanding that if, let's say, Espen was calling with a 10 or a 4, that he should feel more comfortable with it, not knowing that Espen actually has an underpair to the board. But now the aggressive seaman betting a pot size bet of 3,000. Is reaching for chips. Very interesting here. Does make the call, and all of a sudden we have 9,000 chips in the pot. Both players with one pot size bet behind, and the Nine of Diamonds completes the board on the river. Espen with the check mark. But if Seaman has another bullet to fire here on this river, he may not win the hand or may be able to snip out his opponent's bluff, but let's see first what Seaman does. And Seaman does bet, not his whole stack. Let's see what the bet sizing was. It 
wasn't the large bed, it was for 2500 Espen did have the correct read on the flop and the turn. This would kind of get into his opponent's head if he made the call. It's also possible that he uh, thinks he can get his opponent off a 10 or a 4 by raising here. But if he thinks his opponent is purely bluffing, he will call. If he thinks his opponent is never getting off his hands, he will fold. But there's a lot in the pot. Didn't seem too thrilled about the call, but it was a correct pickoff. And Espen wins a massive 14,000 chip pot after calling all the way down with his threes, facing bets on the flop turn in the river, along with Seamical Branson raising preflop after Espen limped the button with his threes. And Espen now has more than a two to one chip advantage. Plus, we believe he has another bullet behind for an extra 10,000 for when he wants it. And at the same time, pines have also gone up to 200, 400. So stack depths are now a bit shorter than they were before in terms of big lines. Another pocket pair for your stud. Branson limping the button with the 6 5. That's been, I believe, asking how many chips his opponent had behind. And heads up play, you can always count your stack and figure that out as well. But Seaman was quick to respond. That's been raising big to 2400. Does take it down right here, right now to win another pot. This one wasn't too big though, just the blinds and a little bit more. I'm looking forward to when the artificial intelligence gets advanced enough that we can see subtitles from Norwegian to English in real time. We are on a 30 minute delay, but this was recorded in real time. But since whole cards are being shown at this moment, we are on delay. And Seaman with an absolute monster with Ace King suited. And your set also with an ace. This could get hairy. Was a raise for three big blinds from the big blind after Espen limped his ace five. And Espen is all in. Expect a call by Seaman. Seaman does make the call and is at risk with his ace king. He is far ahead. Still has a sweat. Yeah. And an ace out of the window. So both players flopping top pair, but Cole Branson still ahead with that king kicker. A two on the turn changes nothing. And a three on the river and Cole Branson doubles up through Jorstad. Back in business, stacks are evened up. <laughs> 
And that was a bit of a setup. Can't blame Espen at all for that jam. Of course, Seaman is going to snap call that off. And stacks are fairly even. Espen does have an extra 10,000 bullet behind, however. Each of the heads up matches, players start with 10,000 chips with lines at 100 100. And at any given point, they can add another 10,000 to their stack. Many do it when they run out of chips, some do it right away, and some do it sometime in between. Your stack gets a walk with this 9 6 suited. Phenomenal week here at the Norwegian Championship. Here at Card Casino Bratislava. Tons of tournaments. We live streamed a 50 50 100 PLO affair a few days ago as well. So, some amazing cash games. But now we have a match of the ages with the world champion Espen Jorstad facing up against Seaman Branson in the semifinals of the Heads Up Championship. And your set, flopping the goods, flopping the nuts with the 6-4 on a 5-3-2 flop. It'll be curious to see whether he can get any value from this hand. It's unfortunate for him, Cole Branson didn't hit any piece of the board and Seaman does quickly fold. Branson opening up the button with the 6-4 on the 7-3-2 flop after it was checked around in a limp pop by a Jorstad. Things are getting feisty now. Jorstad uh, raising his gut shot to 1,200. Both players with a different gut shot. Is a leveling war about to take place? Will we see a three breath by Cole Branson? We do see a call, so this is very interesting. Oh, it was a fold, I'm sorry. I thought I heard call, but it was a fold. No, it was indeed a call, and the ace of hearts on the turn. Espen does check. Now is Cole Branson after he called 
that raise earlier by Espen going to bet his 4-6. Really quite the leveling war. We could see Orsted's actually ahead with the 6-5 despite either player connecting thus far with this board. Both players do have a gut shot. Well, Branson checks it back. And the Ace of Clubs pairing the board on the river. Your set's actually ahead if this goes check check. But if one of the players bets it, unless we get into a betting war for some reason, Orsted will take it down. But if a player bets it, they should get it. And Espen does bet it. Perhaps thrilled that it got through, but he would have been able to take it down if it went check check as well. Been a very interesting heads up match between these two players. Seaman appears to be holding his own against the world champion Espen. And opens the 900 from the button. Espen likely not going anywhere with the 6 4 suited. Does indeed make the call. Eight spades, queen diamond, jack diamond flop is not good for either player, but let's see if one of them represents that it's good. It does go check check to the ace of diamond turn. A pretty scary board. Well, Branson is still miles ahead. And looks to be repping the ace or the diamonds with a bet here of 400. That's enough to get the job done. No spy that's set. Maybe it's that. They have the tight code. I think Espen was joking about making a tight bolt with the 6-4 there. for Espen. He's gotten a few times these uh, low pocket pairs, this time from the button. He went them before. Let's see if he does the same now. Now it looks like he's into uh, raising his uh, small pocket pair. Ankle Branson with the Queen-10 will either call or raise. He does call. Espen should feel a bit more comfortable now with his fives in the jack-jack three flop. Although his opponent could have a jack or a higher pocket pair, the chances are not. It looks like a min better 400 and it is. And Seaman calls with this queen 10. Let's see what the turn might bring. Nice. 
We're in a diamond double pair in the board on the turn. Seaman checks it over to Espen once again. Espen betting 1600. Well, Branson basically has a queen kicker to this two pair. Does he think that's enough? Does he put Espen on a jack or a three? Does he think he can bluff Espen off the pot? All these things are probably going through his mind now. He does think he can push Espen off the pot, raising it up to 4,000. Seaman showing a lot of heart, not afraid to play. Sometimes he could be intimidating not only to play on the TV table, but the fact that he's facing off against a world champion. And Espen now, who is in position and knows he might face a bigger bet on the river, needs to think about whether his opponent is full of it or not. Really loving this heads up matchup so far. And Espen opting to make the call to bring the pot over to 10,000. Oh my, and Seaman gets there on the Ten of Heart River. Obviously, he has some things to fear after Espen called his check raise. It does get there, in fact. And I don't think he's going anywhere. Regardless of how he acts here. Both players check. Espen laughs a little bit seeing that he, after hearing that Colbranson had a 10, that he made the correct read on the turn only to get sucked out by Seaman on the river. Raising it up with a pretty ace nine on the button. This hand is over before it started with Espen not getting fancy with his three high. For those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer bringing the semifinals of the Norwegian Championship heads up matchup between 2022 WSOP. Main event world champion Espen Jorstad against Seaman Colbranson. Come on. Seaman has been holding his own. And now both players with the queen. Jorstad's is suited. The kicker shouldn't really matter too much here. A three kicker and a two kicker. You can see Espen has slightly more equity than Colbranson but 48% of the time it will be a split pot, assuming it gets the showdown. Nobody getting any love on this jack of diamond, five of diamond, six of club flop. And both players checking. 
another diamond on the turn. This one's an eight. And the split percentage got even higher, so unless it's a three or two on the river, this will be a chop pot. And the six of spades on the river, I don't expect to see betting too much, too often here. Both players have very thin showdown value. They're not really going to be betting their opponent off anything with the pot so small. And everybody loves a chop pot. Vi er all in. Det er en situasjon der det er S4. Oskar må ha et S for å holde seg i live her mot Øyvind. Det er klart for en flopp. Ingen S på floppen. Det er heller ikke noen mulighet for noen flushedrag her. Og det kommer en knekt, og det er bare et S som kan holde liv i Oskar her. Og der kommer det en toer. Og det betyr at vi har vår første finaledeltaker klar i det som var en reprise av NM Heads Up Online i år. Den gangen var det Oscar som gikk seieren ut. Denne gangen så er det vår doble Norgesmester. Du vant første året, du vant tredje året. Det begynner å bli en stund siden. Det gjør jo det. Så ja, det er på tide å være med et nytt forsøk på en titel i Heads Up. Jeg kan si såpass med at oppe på TV-bordet akkurat nå, så er det en liten chip litt til SP0 i Ørsta. Har du noen drømmemotstander? Nei, jeg vil ikke si det egentlig, men det har vært veldig gøy å møte SP1 selvfølgelig. Det tror jeg alle ville følt med det han har gjort det siste året selvfølgelig. Nå holder jeg mikrofonen foran det som er ganske viktig her, fordi på den der så er det to stjerner. Det er to Norgesmestertitler. Begge har kommet i headset. Du prøver å påstå at du ikke kan dette spillet lenger. Nå nekter jeg. Jeg vil ikke si at jeg prøver å påstå det, men vi får se om det jeg kan fra før og fortsatt holde i dag. I finalen også. Lykke til. Tusen takk. Så det ser ut som at matchup on the outer table is over, just waiting to see who wins this match against Espen Jorstad and Simon Wildebranson. And you can see both players having fun. There is a bit of money on the line as well, but both players have already locked up. 7,000 euros. <laughs> the winner of this match will head to the finals knowing that they have at least 10,910 euros and will play for the top prize of 16,620 euros. And perhaps more importantly to both players, but at least for Espen, they will have the honor of also being crowned a Norwegian champion here at the Norwegian Championship. Lots of pride in the Norwegian community. Both players with suited rags. All we were watching the hand at the outer table. The blinds went up to 25500. Let's see if Jorstad wants to play his 9-5 suited from out of position. It looks like he does. And already 2700 in the pot. And two clubs on this flop. While Gulbranson hits bottom pair, Jorstad checks his flush draw over to his opponent, Seaman. And 
Seaman reaching for some chips will be betting out his bottom pair. It doesn't look like a big bet of, at all of 700. We know Espen is not going anywhere. Is he going to call or raise is the only question. It does look like he will just call. The four diamonds on the turn gives Espen a few more outs. He has a gut shot to the wheel. If a two comes on the river, both players check. And the king of diamonds pairing the board on the river will Branson with the check mark after pairing up his three on the flop. But is your stack gonna try to take this one away from him? And he is. With a big bet, putting Seaman to the test. A pot size bet of 4,100. Well, Branson checking his cards again. And it is in a very uncomfortable spot. Despite connecting with the flop, it was only with bottom pair. He now has the best hand with two pair. Espen realizing the only way he can win this hand is by betting into it. But it doesn't work out for the world champion. Seaman picks off his bluff. Espen taps the table, designating a nice hand to Seaman. And now Seaman is in the chip lead. He was before as well, but Espen did have an opportunity to fire another bullet. And even if Espen adds on that bullet now, he would still be behind. But we saw in his earlier matchup against uh, Jonathan, when he got low, that he was still keeping that bullet in reserve. And it looks like he's doing the same here. Espen on the button with Jack Six offsuit. Has us in seven big blinds. Does just call, giving LeBranson a free look with his five deuce suited. And Branson's the one to connect with middle pair and a gut shot to the wheel on the ace three five rainbow flop. Checks it over to your stat, who also checks it back. Let's see if any action happens on this eight of club turn. Well, Branson betting 500, your stat snap holding. has been so short. Seaman opts not to get cute with his rags. Espen would have been more than happy to get it in with this suited king seven. Probably would have jammed to anything there. While Espen is on the ropes with the chips he has in front of him, even if he loses this, he can reload for 10,000. 
can see the extra bullet under the Super Mario there. And a tasty hand for your step with the King Queen suited. Will Branson with the 9 6 suited. The 69 suited for the Seaman. Your set limps it in. Seaman not getting cute with his 9 6 suited. Set with a flush draw, a nut flush draw with this king queen, also with a gut shot to Broadway. Well, but Branson has his back doors to the flush, however, his nine and six are also live. Both players opt to check. And Espen with a check mark now after pairing up his queen on the queen of spades turn. Seaman checks once again. Will Espen check, hoping that his opponent will bluff the river? He must feel that he's ahead at this point in time. And he does bet 650, and I can't see how Seaman is going to do anything but fold. There's no point in bluffing here, no point in seeing a river. He comes to the same conclusion. And maybe that's the momentum Espen needs, even though all he did was take away a blind from his opponent. Branson is first to act and does raise so he's basically pricing himself in I expect to see Espen get his short stack of 3300 in here if not now then later does indeed jam so Seaman was not priced in after all he did fold and Espen picks up some free chips having a lot of fun. It is near midnight here in Bratislava with nearly 2,000 Norwegians in town. So of course there is going to be good times to be had. Not just at the poker tables, but the cash games are absolutely booming. A few dozen tables running one floor down from where we are. There's three full floors of poker action, about a couple hundred tables, a massive facility here at Car Casino Bratislava. If not the biggest in Europe, then it's certainly among them. Seaman completing with his 10 7 suited. Uh, checking it back with 8-5. Seaman improving to middle pair on an ace-10-4 rainbow flop. And it went check-check and the four diamonds pairs the board on the turn. Let's see if Espen tries to take this one. Oh, it's just the blinds being that the blinds are now 250 500 Even just the blinds are nice to pick up. Unfortunately, it will likely not work. He bets a pot size bet of a thousand. 
semen is behind to other connections on the board, such as the ACE or FOUR. It shows no fear with his uh, two pair and makes the call. Seaman who is guaranteed to be ahead on any river. It is a scary one if Espen bedded with the Queen of Hearts, but not much for him to worry about here. Both players check. And Seaman picks up a 3,000 chip pot. Although it would be amazing to see Espen make it to the finals, he does have his work cut out for him. And based on the way Seaman has played, I'm looking forward to see either player play in the finals. Your said jamming his queen eight and uh, Seaman with three high, he shows it. It was suited, but uh, still just three high. So Espen goes from six big lines to seven. Once again, he does have that extra bullet he can fire for an extra 10,000, but it looks like he's gonna keep that in reserve just in case he runs out of chips. But if that's the case, he would be a three to one dog with his opponent holding 30,000 to his 10,000. He's first going to try to come back though with his 3,000 in chips. And this time it's Cole Bradson with an ace in the button. And it's his turn to jam and Espen's turn to fold with just five high. Bad timing here for Espen. He's going to get snapped off by Seaman with the ace nine. He does have some outs. Both of a six and five are alive. Let's see how this plays out. And it's a six out of the window, followed by an eight and a three. So Espen now ahead in the hand, but needs to fade an ace or a nine or some other runners. But now it doesn't need to fade anything. A six apart in the turn to improve the trips. The river is inconsequential and it is the queen of spades. And Espen doubles up to 6,000 in chips. And Seaman still has a very healthy stack of 24,000. A little luck never hurts in any tournament. Perhaps Super Mario helped Espen get the job done with his 6-5 offsuit. a good chance both players were also playing other events earlier today. The quarterfinals of the Heads Up took place yesterday, so this is a fresh Heads Up matchup. Fikk beskjed om mamma at jeg måtte holde deg gående til hun var ferdig på jobb. Jeg lurer på om det nærmer seg nå. Jeg tipper hun slutter nå. Så bra vi... Ja, vi holder boken i alle fall. 
Ja. Se hur det räcker komma sig på rail nu minst det. on the bottom with 10 and 6 suited. Just calls there. Let's see if Seaman does anything other than check his option back with a pretty queen 9 suited. He does indeed raise the 1500. Set thinking about what to do with this 10 6 suited he is reaching for 1 1k chip to make the call, bringing the pot up to 3,000 already. Nobody catching a sniff of this King 5 3 rainbow flop. Uncle Branson, who was the aggressor, may try to rip something here. He is ahead with this Queen 9. Looks like a bet of 800, and indeed it is. Espen does have back doors to the flush. His 10 and 6 are still alive. So if he's not putting his opponent on a king, maybe he will call. Maybe he'll try to bluff his opponent as well. But he does the obvious option, which is fold. A look at the current chip counts, keeping in mind Espen can reload for another 10,000. Two players still having fun. It is after midnight now in Bratislava at Card Casino Bratislava. Both players with one Broadway and one Broadway card and a rag. Let's see if your set calls off with his king. He's not snapping any decisions here. Is ahead if he does call. And he does make the call with this King Deuce. Let's see if he could double once again. Back to near the starting stack of 10,000. <laughs> So far, so good for Espen on the 10 6 6 rainbow flop. But a 5 on the turn to put Seaman ahead, and Espen needs a king or a 10. Otherwise, he's going to have to fire his last bullet. And a queen of diamonds on the river. Espen is out of chips on his first bullet. And is now a three to one underdog. Regardless of how this turns out for Seaman, he can say that he held his own playing heads up in a semifinal matchup against Espen Ulden or Jorstad against a world champion. Something to be very proud of. That was a 
And buys have gone up to 300, 600. They do creep on up on you pretty quickly every 15 minutes. Finals is tomorrow? Yeah, okay. finals is tomorrow. Thank you. And who won uh, the first match? Because I can't understand Norwegian. Oh, it was, um, what's his name? Do you have the names? I have them, if you give me a second. Uh, It was uh, Evan Larson. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. So there was going to be a debate about whether the finals would take place today or tomorrow, and it is going to be tomorrow. That is confirmed. We do know that Oyvind Larsson, after beating Oscar Bilstadt, will be facing off against either Simon Goldbranson or Espen Ullen Jorstad. We have to say, wait to see which. And right now, it is Goldbranson ahead in this hand with two pair. Will he be able to realize more value or is he just going to pull in an extra 2,400 chips? He is going to try with an over bet to the pot. Does Espen think his opponent is bluffing? He will give him credit for this hand. Many different gears by Seaman. Appears very confident. Now that Oyvind Larsson is done with his matchup, perhaps he's watching both of these players play. Regardless of who he has to play, he has his work cut out for him. Seaman calling with his ace rag. Is Espen gonna raise up his pretty 10-9 suited? Hasn't made any decision yet. But is reaching for more chips now and is making the jam. It is a coin flip situation despite Seaman having that ace. And Seaman makes the call. It could be all over right here, right now. Espen's going to need some love from this board to stay alive. I'm literally on the edge of my seat. And Espen connecting with middle pair on the queen 10 4 flop, but he isn't out of the woods yet. He has to sweat an ace. There are some back doors. And the queen pairing on the turn, goodbye to the back door, so now only sweating an ace. Barry green time. And the jack of spades on the river, your stud gets there with this 10 9 suited. And instead of hitting the rail, is near even in chips with Seaman Goldbranson to make it to the finals.
I'm him, that man. is great news for the poker fans. That means we'll have some more exciting poker action between Simon Gulbranson and 2022 WSOP main event champ Espen Jorstad to see who will make it to tomorrow's finals in the Heads Up Championship against Oyvind Larsson. I think he got out of the book that people knock him out in the last period. Why did he do that? And Jorstad, uh, with not that good of a hand here with A3, one of the worst possible. And unfortunate for Seaman, he doesn't get any action with his Ace Queen. I have no pang out to do what I want. Still, I'm going to slap out there. It's as if these two are playing a home game, enjoying chatting with each other. This is what poker is all about. Poker is not about wearing the sunglasses, covering the face with some hoodies and other things. It's about having some fun, playing some cards, just like these two ballers are doing at the moment. So you are set with the nine seven off from the button. He will be raising for a min race of twelve hundred. That will not scare Seaman off with his Queen Ten. He will either call or raise himself. Well. He will be calling. He is at a position heading to the flop. With 2,400 already in the pot. Will Branson improving to middle pair. He was already ahead on the King of Clubs, Five of Diamonds, Queen of Spades flop. Does check it over to Espen, who checks it back. And now Gulbranson can feel very confident. He improved the trips on the King of Clubs turn. Does check it again. Likely hoping that Espen will bet here. Espen will have none of that and checks it back again. Now Espen didn't connect with this Three of Spades River. Is Seaman going to try to induce Espen to bet? I think he's going to try to get some value, but it's just not going to happen. Let's just bet them in though for 600, but Espen uh, isn't going to call. I could see some opportunities where he might raise, but not here. And good for him, he didn't pick that spot because Seaman was not going to fold his trips even to a jam at that point. Over to Seaman on the button here with the A7 offsuit. Very tasty hand and heads up play. Does just call. Let's see if Espen jacks it up at all with the King 3 suited. Or is happy to see a free flop. He is happy to see a free flop and reevaluate from there.
And once again, Seaman connecting with a board, this time once again with middle pair after doing the same before, before improving, improving to trips on the eight of spades, seven apart to a club rainbow flop. Your stat checks. Seaman looking to get some value here with a min bet. Has been putting it to see uh, what happens on the turn. Maybe he thinks uh, his king high is good at the moment. Has been checking again on the jacket club turn. Seaman checking it back. And the king of diamond on the river. So now Espen with the best hand. Got that free card on the river. Called the min bet on the flop and now has top pair. Let's see if he fires out of bed hoping that his player has a lower pair. We can see that Seaman does indeed have a lower pair. And it is a pot size bet for 2400, putting Seaman to the test again. This time he's putting him to the test where he has the best hand. Seaman looked back at his a7, wondering if the king of diamonds changed anything. And does make the correct fold. Nice read there by Seaman. He will look back at the stream later and be pleased with that fold. Perhaps be disappointed though that he didn't bet bigger on the flop or try to fire a second bet on the turn, but didn't lose that much anyway. An amazing matchup between these two. Perhaps three if we're counting that Super Mario card protector that Espen has. But we're gonna assume it's one player to a hand and that Super Mario is not contributing to Espen's massive poker brain power. And Espen with a very pretty hand once again from the button. Let's just slump it in. Seaman not getting fancy with this 10 5 off. <laughs> Seaman checks. We can't see what the flop is at the moment, but we shall see it soon enough. And here we go. Quite a monster spot for 10 5 offsuit. In fact, Seaman flopping top two pair, facing a min bet by Espen, who has basically a backdoor flush draw, maybe thinking his ace and nine are live. And Seaman not so playing his hand at all, raising it up to 1900. Seaman has many different gears and gets some value with Espen calling. Of course, Espen still has a chance to get there, but the chances are very slim. You could see a 93% favorite Seaman is. Two club turn opens up a uh, potential gut shot to the wheel for, uh, for Yarstad, but that didn't improve his equity by that much. But it is one of the runners that uh, could help him. Well, Branson is not afraid that Espen had the 4 6 or Ace 4 when he called that bet. Firing out for 3,500 into 5,000.
And Espen was reaching for a lot of chips, but is now having second thoughts. And instead will fold his hand. And Seaman Gobranson now has a tasty chip lead. 25,000 in chips to Espen's 15,000. Nearly two to one chip advantage. Floor? Can someone get me a napkin? I don't know. Okay, let's hit the front up. Espen with the big slick. Let's see what Gulbranson first does from the button. Does just call. Will Espen jack it up from out of position with the premium hand of big slick. Is reaching for chips, is not content to let his opponent see a free flop. Raising it up to 1800. And Seaman does not want to pay the price to see what will happen next and gives Espen his blind that he completed. It sounds like blinds are up. Or at least according to Espen. It's now 400, 800. So the action is picking up. Remember, they started at blinds 100, 100. Our stream started with blinds at 125, 250. As we were busy broadcasting the end of the six max PLO championship. That ended a little bit late. So these players were first playing on an outer table until the feature table was available. Espen raising it up to 1600 with king six and has his opponent's 10 six dominated. Seaman quickly folds. And now these preflop pots will add up with the blinds just increasing. <laughs> Er det som er problemet når det blir for mange sånne hender og programforplikter til å høyne, så blir det sånn fryktelig mange. Blir jævlig out of line etter hvert. Seaman completing the blinds from the button. Can we take a five minute break after this hand? Can we take a break after this hand? I got the money. Espen we'll asking both the dealer and Seaman if they could take a quick break after this hand. But meanwhile, Seaman flopping top pair. <laughs> Your stat with a gut shot to the straight would need a 10 for that to complete but meanwhile is facing off against your stat let's see what your stat does here he will call nope he's raising folks there may not be a need for a break depending on how this one continues Espen getting a little feisty here with this gut shot. Perhaps the timing was wrong with Seaman improving to top pair. Already a big pot of 6,400 and a five of hearts on the turn. Now Espen has a double gutter.
is the first to act. He did just check raise that flop. Taking his time, this could get very ugly very fast. And Espen betting out again. He didn't bet out before, but it was a check raise before. But keeping up the aggression with a bet of 2300. We don't expect Seaman to go anywhere with top pair. Is he going to call or raise is the main question. And he does just call and there's 11,000 in the pot. Espen has exactly 11,000 in his stack and the four of clubs completes the board on the river. Espen does not complete his draws. Is he going to try to steal this one away? And if so, can he get his opponent to lay down top pair? Or will he be giving up on the hand? Espen does indeed check understanding that perhaps this isn't the timing for him or perhaps with something else in mind if Seaman bets here Seaman may try to go for some value with this top pair but does check it back Takes it down with top pair after Espen misses his draws and now has the world champion on the ropes with a nearly three to one chip <laughs> advantage. <laughs> and it doesn't look like players will go on a five minute break after all. Som altså det blir annen plass i Potli med Tomo. Det er en fantastisk prestasjon, men klarer du å føle lykke over prestasjonen akkurat nå? Ja, så klart. Å komme inn på andre plass er jo en prestasjon i seg selv. Men så klart, det er jo surt å ikke vinne. Vi vil jo alltid vinne, men det er ikke mye man får gjort der. Hva har du gjort riktig i løpet av denne turneringen når du klarer å komme deg heads up? Nei, si det. Jeg har jo spilt mye PLO cash games, lite turneringer, men jeg har jo en god sans for hvordan man spiller turneringsboker. Så da har jeg jo vært blandet på en måte kunnskapen min fra PLO cash med på en måte turneringsboker i Holdem da. Så har jeg funket jo. Du føler at man sitter i hvert fall fra 4-3 handed og inn, så er det veldig mange flipper, det er veldig mange situasjoner. Er det noen spesielle hender du rett og slett angrer på i dag? Nei, eller kanskje den jeg hadde mot Ted når jeg var volym for turneringslivet mitt. Jeg tror ikke jeg skal gå all inn over der og bare syne. Ellers så synes jeg jeg har spilt bra. Så klart det er sikkert noen små feil, men ja, synes jeg har spilt bra. Og vi kan forvente at du kommer til å herje i main event også? Så klart. Vi gleder oss. Gratulerer med dagen. Tusen takk. Gratulerer med dagen, skal jeg først og fremst si. Gratulerer som Norgesmester i Potli med Tomaha. Hvordan oppsummerer du dagen? Nei, det har vært hektisk. Det har vært veldig spennende. Mye hyggelige folk og veldig mye... 
variationer i och med att du sitter i god stim i lång tid och följer av kontroll och så och plötsligt så är er du lite utad igen du blir tatt i en bluff och så går i i kurvor då och så kommer du tillbaka igen som på slutet där er en uh, otrolig god känsla Man säger gärna att Potlim Toma är er väldigt unges spill här er er denna unga aggressionen verkligen kommer till sin rätt men 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 rutinen det är er ganska ordentligt att ha på sig poker generellt. Ja, men jag är er nog en aggressiv spelare själv om jag har ora inne för att säga si det så. Jag är er väl känd för det då. Hur mycket betyder det att vinna en norgesmästertitel? Ja, det är er, jag sa dock att det gutta någon när vi var heads up. Så se si vad det vill gå till men uh, det är er en ordentlig nedtur att bli nummer 2 när det är en två stycken då för det är er, det också vinna är er en väldigt god känsla. Det är er ju mycket snack om det i poker alltså det att vinna en titel, det att vinna ett trofé, det att kunna gå in i historieböckerna kontra det att ta med sig en väldigt god utbetalning men men när du får summat det och och faktiskt tagit in över att du har vunnit en norgesmästerövelse vad är er viktigast för dig tror du? Det är er trofé ja. helt klart. Ja pengar kommer och går. Nei, det är er inte det, er det som är er, er så viktigt när vi så det är att vinna. God känsla. Är er det något tidspunkt i den turneringen som 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 vente vente spelet för dig som virkelig hvor du var satt på en pröva hvor du eller som snudde rytmen i spelet ditt? Nej, inte rytmen, men jag hade en väldigt god session på ett uh, firevägsbord tidigt och då byggde jag fra 2 miljoner till runt 4 miljoner med och ja köra bord är er det vi ser för då då var det short handed och de var lite uh, short hade lite mindre chips och sånt. Och då kom jag in på finalbordet med 35 % av av stacken men uh, på slutet så var det lite mer bingo då självklart. Gratulerar med en fantastisk turnering och inte minst gratulerar som Norges mästare. Tusen tack för det. And welcome back after a short break for the conclusion of the Heads Up match semifinal between none other than 2022 WSOP main event champion Espen Ullen Jorstad against the formidable Seaman Gulbranson, who currently has a massive 3 to 1 chip edge. This could be fireworks right here. Both players with premium hands, Heads Up. And Gulbranson. Jams. Espen calls. This could be it, folks. <laughs> Espen needs some help. It is more or less a coin flip, but Espen does need to hit some of this board. <laughs> Seaman currently ahead with his ace high. And so far, so good for Colbranson. Espen still needing some help. He's down to six outs. No yeah, runners in his hand either. The seven of diamonds on the turn pairing the board did not help Espen. And the six of parts yeah, yeah, yeah. on the river, it is all over. Congratulations for to Seaman Gulbranson for defeating 2022 WSOP main event champion Espen Ullen Jorstad. Seaman will go on to face off against Oyvind Hansen tomorrow for the finals for the championship. Best of luck to Seaman. Congrats Espen as well for making it all the way to the semifinals. Well done Seaman. This is Jason Glatzer. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a good night. <laughs>